Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to Talink Investor Conference webinar. Talink has recently released its third quarter report and will now provide more insight into recent financial results and companies' activities. Today, we are hosted by the member of the management board, Harry Hanschmidt, and financial director, Veiko Havapu. We will start with company's presentation, after which we will follow with the questions received from the audience. If you would like to use the opportunity to ask your question to Talink, please use the question box on the right side of your screen. Gentlemen, I invite you to start with the presentation. Yes, hello from my side. My name is um, Harry Hanschmidt. I'm a member of the management board for Tallink uh, Group. Uh, today we will talk about our Q3 uh, results. Uh, and uh, as you know, we, uh, Q3 is the most important uh, quarter for Tallink Group. Uh, first, of course, we will uh, remind you a little bit who Tallink is. And for the new listeners, so Dialink is the leading European provider of leisure and business travel and sea transportation services in the Baltic Sea region. We own a fleet of 14 vessels that we operate on seven routes. We also operate four hotels, three of them in Tallinn, one in Riga. Past year, our revenues were 950 million euros with a 1.6 billion asset base. This is the sh main leaderships. We have over 7,400 employees. Uh, we served 9.8 million passengers last year, and our Club One loyalty program is 2.6 million loyal uh, customers. We also transport 385,000 Roro cargo units, and we are traded on Nasdaq Tallinn and Nasdaq Helsinki. Our uh, Q3 is uh, the most important quarter. And uh, the highlights here this year were that we have a, a new uh, high passenger number that we achieved in July and August, uh, record numbers, and uh, strong operations. Uh, we had the strongest uh, net profit uh, in Q3 uh, of uh, all, all time. Uh, we also signed a loan agreement for the new LNG powered fast ferry uh, called MyStar that will start operating between Tallinn and Helsinki in 2022, beginning of 2022. We have uh, paid out uh, dividends, uh, but uh, this year uh, still capital reduction is to come and it will take place on uh, third uh, uh, of December for the shareholders uh, in Estonia and then overall and on 5th of December for the FTR uh, shareholders. Uh, also, we uh, acquired uh, the franchise agreement uh, uh, or, or the franchise rights for uh, the Burger King restaurants that we will be developing in Latvia, Estonia and Lithuania, so all of the Baltics. We already have two uh, well-functioning Burger King restaurants uh, on the ships um, uh, Star and Megastar, and we are very excited uh, to uh, bring this uh, brand on uh, land and uh, do a uh, development of the full uh, Baltics. Also, Rhino Paron joined our supervisory uh, board. Uh, this also uh, you can see here is the uh, uh, working uh, uh, layout of, of MyStar or what the ship could look like, but this is uh, still a little bit work in progress. So uh, maybe a little bit more detail about the results. We saw uh, very nice growth in passenger numbers. And here I would like to remind you that in the First quarter this year, uh, we had a docking of seven vessels, so we, we did uh, uh, many upgrade works as well. And I'm glad to say uh, that uh, these uh, upgrades definitely have gone into the right place. And we have seen uh, improved uh, third uh, quarter, and it's definitely to do uh, also with these investments that we did. Uh, so the passenger numbers went up 0.9%. Uh, we saw a little bit drop in cargo numbers, and this has been the uh, current trend where the Nordic economies uh, have uh, shown a little bit uh, uh, slower growth. 
uh, and uh, the number of passenger uh, cars went up 0.4 percent our uh, revenue went uh, up 1.5 percent and this is uh, to do with uh, more passengers uh, mainly on the Estonia Finland segment increased onboard spending per passenger on all routes and positive developments in the land operations revenue from shipping operations in the Baltic Sea uh, amounted to 268.4 million euros and also uh, we see a growth of 1.4 percent here we had uh, lower fuel costs and um, this is uh, uh, affected by different factors uh, one was that we uh, managed to fix the price at a favorable level for uh, this year and 41 uh, percent of the fuel price was fixed uh, also we have had lower fuel consumption to various energy efficiency initiatives on the vessels and general lower bunkering uh, prices um, so after revenue we see cross profit also went up 10.5 percent ebta 17 percent we have also an ifrs effect so the comparable ebta growth was very nice 10.7 percent and EBIT we can see 15.9 percent and amounting to a, a net result of uh, 54.6 million euros or 18.5 percent higher than the uh, same period last year. I will give now word to Jonas Joost who will continue uh, with uh, exp uh, explaining the results of our third quarter. Uh, thank you and hello from me as well. So let's uh, now look uh, how the current results fit into the broader context. So as Harry mentioned, uh, we had a record number of passengers in uh, the uh, third quarter this year. If you look at the cargo on the top right, um, then yes, there has been some uh, year on year slide both in uh, Q2 and Q3 results this year. But if we look at the longer term uh, trends, and for example, the levels of uh, cargo units that were carried in uh, the second and third quarter of 2016, then uh, we're still doing quite uh, quite well in that regard. Um, on the bottom left, uh, in terms of revenues, uh, following the slower Q1 results, uh, which was uh, affected by high number of talks. So in the nine month view, we have actually almost uh, almost caught up uh, to the result and, and we're basically on par with uh, with the nine months the results in 2018, but uh, but more importantly, yes, we we did uh, catch up and even surpass last year's uh, results when it comes to to the earnings. And uh, well, we have the on the bottom right on this slide we have the EBITDA results, but as Harry mentioned, that we also have the IFRS uh, effect. Uh, this year, which which does not make those numbers directly comparable. But uh, but if, uh, if if we adjust for the IFRS, uh, then the comparable EBITDA for the nine months is is up more than 12% uh, this year. But uh, what is directly comparable is the uh, is the net result. And and again, as Harry mentioned, so we had a record net result in in Q3, also very well visualized here. And um, the nine month result result is, is also up compared to the last year by 6%. But, uh, but, but actually, when we, when we think about uh, the nine months results, then I would just uh, like, to, like to remind everyone that in the first quarter, uh, the, the net result was affected by untypically high number of dockings of ships. And also, there were some uh, one of uh, costs related to the changes in the management. Uh, in Q2, uh, the net result, which looks on par with the result of 2018, we had uh, the decision to increase uh, dividends, which due to the Estonian taxation also brought about uh, a 4 million euros higher uh, corporate income tax cost. And, and while we are re uh, reflecting on the past quarters, then I would just remind also that in the Q4 of 2018, 
we had the listing in Nasdaq Helsinki, which also brought about some some one-off expenses. So actually, it's not so explicitly visible from this chart, but uh, but over the last 12 months, uh, the results have been uh, very strong. And and very briefly uh, talked about the dividends. Yes, this were, these were paid out in uh, 3rd of July this year, and as Harry mentioned earlier, uh, that uh, there will be the share capital reduction payment taking place in in, in less than a month's time. And on uh, that happy note, I would pass on the microphone to our financial director, Veiko Havabu, who will uh, take you through the results in more detail. Hello, my name is Veiko Havabu, and I will con continue in more details on the results on the segment levels. Uh, so the revenue for the third quarter amounted to 288 million euros, which is a improvement of 4.2 million euros or 1.5% compared to last year Q3. Uh, the restaurant and shops sales, uh, very good improvement, 6.1% uh, compared to last year, uh, totaling uh, improvement of 9.1 million euros. Uh, this is coming uh, quite equally from uh, both uh, shop sales uh, on, on, on ships, then restaurant and bar sales, and also the uh, positive development on the onshore shop sales. So the shop sales to some extent was positively impacted by the uh, decrease of the excise taxes on the alcohol from the 1st of July this year in Estonia. Uh, ticket sales, although uh, higher passenger number, Ticket sales is uh, slightly lower compared to the peri uh, same period last year, mainly due to the tougher competition on the Estonia-Finland routes. Uh, the cargo transportation revenue has declined by 2 million euros. Um, yeah, the uh, routes originating from Estonia. Um, and also worth mentioning here that uh, part of the decline is also uh, related to the uh, uh, lower fuel surcharge we collect from the customers, which is directly uh, linked to the uh, fuel world market prices. The accommodation sales, uh, minus 1.1 million compared to the same period last year. And here we see, of course, effect from uh, one uh, hotel less in operations. Um, income from charters uh, for the quarter stands at 2 million euros, so the contract is unchanged and the uh, super fast vessel uh, Atlantic Vision is continuously chartered out to Canadian state company and that is expected to continue. Uh, the revenue development by geographical segments representing uh, specific routes. Then again, the uh, total revenue is up by 4 million, 4.2 million euros. Uh, um, Estonia, Finland, uh, uh, total revenue amounted to 102 million euros. It was mentioned uh, higher passenger number at the same time uh, lower ticket revenue due to the tougher competition and also uh, lower cargo revenue but uh, all the uh, decline uh, from the ticket and cargo was uh, uh, mitigated by the uh, very nice increase on uh, uh, spend per passenger so onboard spending uh, was nicely up for Tallinn Helsinki routes uh, um, Uh, Estonia, Sweden, uh, total revenue amounted to, uh, and here we see the cargo numbers uh, declining compared to last uh, year, same period, 7.3%, uh, mostly compensated by the better onboard revenue per passenger. Latvia, Latvia, Sweden, the total revenue for the third quarter was 24 million euros. Uh, so, uh, 
here I, I'd like to refer to the change in the passenger mix compared to uh, comparable period. So we have less one-way passengers, more cruise passengers, meaning that that will translate into lower ticket revenue, both from uh, passenger ticket and car ticket, but uh, but then uh, also higher revenue from onboard sales. Uh, so the total is quite comparable to the last year. Uh, very positive development on the Finland Sweden routes. Uh, so uh, cargo on the same level compared to last year, but nice improvement on ticket per passenger, but, uh, but very, very, very strong strong improvement on the onboard spend per passenger. Um, yep, other uh, segments quite comparable to the last year, as, as referred also as the uh, charter contract will continue as it is for time being. Um, here I will give you overview of the consolidated income statement for the third quarter. Um, yeah, the revenue uh, total sales increased 4 million euros, supported by the increased passenger number and then also strong onboard sales. Cost of sales uh, at the same time, uh, contrary declining uh, 4 million euros. So here we see uh, impact from maybe three main areas. It's, it's first of all, lower fuel cost compared to uh, last year Q3. Also uh, from the strong cost control We have savings on the operating costs, uh, but on technical and maintenance costs in Q3, as a uh, large part of technical cost was taken during the first half related to the dockings of seven vessels. Um, marketing and general administration costs down by 1 million euros, positive de development there as well. Uh, as mentioned by Jonas, EBITDA plus 12 million euros uh, compared to last year, and the comparable EBITDA is plus uh, 7.6 million euros compared to last year. Uh, also, as the EBITDA has improved compared to last year, the EBITDA margin is up from 25% to 27.3% this year, third quarter. And uh, yes, very positive development on the net profit level as well as all-time high uh, third quarter profit, so meaning the uh, kind of uh, describing very well the very successful high season for us. Um, some more details on the cash flow. So from the operations, the cash flow, cash flow is up by 6 million euros. Uh, the capital expenditure is uh, slightly higher compared to last year. So uh, the investments were mainly made to technical maintenance as uh, type of investments, then energy efficiency solutions, and also booking and sales systems. The total investments for uh, the nine months uh, amount to 38.5 million euros to the existing fleet and systems. And on top of that, uh, there was a 12.4 million euros down payment for the new built uh, vessel MyStar. Uh, the um, free cash flow amounts to uh, 61 million euros, which is up from comparable period, 4 million euros. And uh, the debt financing net effect this year represents basically only the down payment of uh, already existing debt. So compared to last year, or maybe worth to remind that last year in Q3, there was a uh, repayment of, uh, of uh, Norwegian uh, Krona nominated bonds in, in, in amount of 130, 120 million euros. And at the same time, the, 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 there was an addition of one loan 110 million euros in Q3 last year. Uh, interest is down by 1 million compared to last year, third quarter. Uh, dividend paid uh, last year, dividend was 20 million euros and tax on dividend 4 million euros. And this year the dividend is uh, up uh, 5 cents per share total. Uh, so the 
total cash flow from dividend paid was 33 million euros and of course therefore a higher tax on dividend as well. Uh, so the change in cash, negative, but of course here we see uh, higher investments and uh, higher uh, dividends paid to our, our investors. And that is according to our plans. Uh, small overview of the uh, uh, balance sheet. So the total assets uh, to that uh, uh, 1.6 billion euros. Uh, the uh, fixed assets uh, amount to 1.4 million euros. Here I have to remind you that uh, compared to last year, there is an addition of 101 million euros uh, from the rights of use assets under the IFRS 16. Uh, then uh, somewhat lower current assets uh, and uh, cash as well as referred uh, in, the, in the cash flow explanation. Uh, the interest bearing liabilities amounted to 550, uh, 565 million euros, which includes also 105 million euros of IFRS 16 effect here. The net debt uh, at the end of uh, third quarter was 527 million euros, and again, comparable uh, if we want to compare it to the to the uh, uh, last periods uh, then uh, uh, we have to remind here that there is uh, this number includes also addition of 105 million euros uh, uh, 105 million euros of the IFRS 16 uh, liabilities uh, the equity ratio stood at 52%, which is very solid, uh, and the book value per share was uh, 1 euros and 22 cents. Here, uh, there is a, of course, effect from the 12 cents uh, um, distributions to the um, investors during this year. So, uh, dividend is paid out already in early July, and the uh, a capital reduction will be paid uh, in the beginning of December. On the next slide, uh, there is an additional overview of the IFRS 16 uh, leases uh, uh, effects on our numbers. Uh, we will not go there in detail, but this is for your information purposes. All right, and uh, thank you, Veiko. Thank you, Harry. This uh, con concludes uh, the presentation part of our webinar. We have received also several questions before the webinar by email, so many thanks uh, for submitting those questions. And also, uh, we have seen that some questions have already been submitted during the webinar. So. Obviously, uh, as Harry mentioned, one of the key highlights this quarter was signing the uh, franchise agreement with Burger King. So there are several questions uh, regarding Burger King, and I think it makes sense maybe to 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 combine them to one question. So uh, the question sent uh, to us before, I just read it out loud. So it's. Could you please provide more information on the planned Burger King franchise business in terms of expansion plans for the coming uh, couple of years? Um, there's a question submitted during the webinar reading, what is the store rollout plan and timing for Burger King stores in the region? And also, what are the rough estimates of projected sales and profits from the Burger King franchise in 2020? So I think, Kari, maybe you would like to elaborate on that one. Thank you, Jonas. Uh, yes, of course. Um, thank you for the question. Uh, it's it's very early uh, in, in in the restaurant chain develop, uh, develop, development, and we only uh, signed uh, the contract. But uh, obviously, this uh, will be quite a quick development phase. We, we will uh, not give uh, official guidance, but we have said that uh, we will build. 50 restaurants ra rather than uh, you know five this is 
uh, more to describe that we want to develop the brand quickly over the Baltics, but there is not an exact number. Uh, uh, it all depends how quickly we can get the right locations uh, and uh, hire the people. Uh, we will start obviously one one restaurant at a time, but we will try to do this um, uh, development uh, hopefully quite equally throughout the Baltics, uh, not uh, focusing on only one country at a time. Uh, uh, well, about the profitability, unfortunately, again, we will not uh, uh, comment uh, further uh, and then this will uh, we will see this how we, uh, when the business uh, develops but uh, we can see from our vessels star and megastar that uh, the revenue is uh, uh, in a captive uh, environment to 2 million euros per restaurant uh, this uh, most likely will not be the case uh, for a regular uh, uh, restaurant uh, uh, on on the land and then most likely is uh, a little bit lower than that. Um, yes, uh, well, we have a five-year development uh, contract and uh, and uh, I hope we can during the next webinar is already uh, elaborate more on a fact fact basis uh, how many restaurants uh, we have uh, opened uh, and so forth. Thank you, Ari. Um, another question that uh, has come in is uh, what caused such a steep drop in cost of sales? So it's 70% uh, below the total revenue for the first time in the last four years. So is it more of a one-off or, or some longer term trend? Veika, what do you think? First of all, of course, we have had a very successful uh, high season. So, so the uh, revenue is higher. Um, uh, and if we look at the cost side, then uh, there we have, of course, first of all, uh, quite nice savings from the uh, from the fuel cost that has impact to the cost of sales. Then, as we have or mentioned in the report and already here as well, that we have had some uh, cost control initiatives, and that has resulted. That, uh, 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 some lower cost in, in, in some uh, operating costs from the port uh, fees. Uh, part of this is related to the lower cargo volumes, but also we see now positive effects uh, to the environmental friendly investments, so energy efficiency investments, so more favorable tariffs from the ports. Uh, but last but not least, uh, worth to mention that also somewhat lower uh, technical and technical maintenance cost as uh, referring to seven ships in docks and under maintenance during the first half of year. So that in, in total combination uh, brings the uh, profitability. Thank you. Um, another set of questions, interesting uh, audience uh, in terms of the questions which have come in before and questions during the webinar uh, relate uh, to the changes in Estonian alcohol tax reduction. So for example, how much of this result can be explained by the Estonia alcohol tax reduction? Where, where would you say uh, your revenue and profitability would have been without it, better or worse than Q3 2018? Um, also, another question, uh, sales on restaurants and shops per passenger were up over 5% in Q3. So this was uh, resulting from the Estonian tax effect, I assume. Do you expect this trend to continue through Q4 and early part in the next year? And also, there was, um, there was also a question about how does lower, this is now from the webinar, how does lower excise tax on alcohol help you, your onboard sales? Wouldn't that be negative because your sales are tax exempt? Harry? Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, we, we generally saw uh, an improvement in, in onboard consumption uh, on uh, most most routes and Finland, Sweden, Latvia, Sweden cannot really be uh, explained uh, regarding the excise excise tax. So we see so uh, 
uh, general positive attitude on board, but uh, definitely we saw um, uh, much more purchases on the uh, Estonia-Finland uh, route and there was a positive uh, effect. What we also heard from our, uh, heard from our um, clients is that uh, there was also a lot of media attention uh, and uh, people just uh, were reminded that uh, there are uh, very good prices uh, on board and, and uh, taking the ferry is a, a good option and uh, we believe that some of this uh, increase actually came from this uh, media attention as well. Uh, but we also, as we promised, we reacted very quickly and reduced prices on certain goods on the ships uh, as, as well. I think there was another question regarding uh, uh, if, if this uh, tax, uh, if our goods are taxed on board, consumption on board is, uh, is uh, uh, not uh, uh, taxed, but uh, uh, when you buy from the shop, uh, we pay taxes just like any other uh, Estonian company. So this is uh, definitely an eff effect uh, there. I think we take the next question. Yes, let's take the next question, uh, which is, can you open up on the competition situation uh, in Estonia and Finland routes? And um, I, I would quickly comment on that, that one, that uh, between Estonia and Finland, uh, there are, in addition to us, they're operating Viking Line and uh, Ekere Line. Um, and um, the, the, the changes that have been taken uh, place in the market uh, were, were that the Viking line um, added uh, another departure to the schedule in Q2 already and thereby increasing the, the supply. And from, uh, from June this year, Ekara line introduced uh, a new second-hand vessel to the Muga Vosari uh, route, which is uh, in competition with us uh, both in terms of uh, cargo units but also also for for the passengers and while those are the um year on year changes then uh, then viking line uh, during the summer season uh, they also um, extend their stockholm helsinki uh, trips from helsinki to tallinn also to provide uh, one additional round trip uh, during the day. Um, but but overall, uh, the competition is 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 tough, and uh, as as we explained before, and as is also um, evident in our fi figures, that it is uh, uh, it is uh, having an effect also also on us. Um, so. So I think I would move uh, on to the next question. Uh, it's it's actually also related uh, to the last qu question, and it's uh, relating to the um, previous question. What kind of ex effects do you expect from the Viking glory in uh, 2021? And have you seen any capacity additions or reductions in in your routes in Q3? So uh, the the Finnbok Argo change was in Q3. So that is answered but um, in terms of uh, Viking glory uh, Veka will uh, Veka will take that one so as we have seen uh, from previous new ship launches that uh, that the capacity on the market is, is defining actually the market size to, to some extent so it means that uh, we think that there, of course, first of all, this new ship will replace older ship, so so the capacity increase not that dramatic. Uh, of course, there will be the new ship effect, so attractive to the to the passengers. But but as said, uh, we are working hard uh, to to uh, have satisfied customers. We have many repeating customers we and we are going to have in future many repeating customers and same to our competitors so so high customer satisfaction um, continuous development of the products and services uh, this is has been uh, this has been so far our strategic strong point i'd say so and of course we will have our our marketing activities uh, during the burial planned as well thank you 
Um, how do you see the freight volumes moving in the future? We are seeing some very big volume drops. When do you expect it to stabilize? Um, yes, uh, well, cargo um, has had very good years. So there has been uh, incredible growth in uh, cargo transportation. And uh, we believe it's quite, uh, quite uh, normal to see some stabilization uh, in between periods of uh, of high high growth. Uh, this year we we see this trend most likely uh, will uh, continue, but uh, uh, we hope that uh, uh, in the in the future cargo will see also again uh, further growth. And obviously this is connected to the Nordic uh, economies that have seen some. Uh, uh some slow uh, some uh, uh, slowdown of of uh, of growth and uh, some of the industries that are affected are maybe the automobile industry so there are a little bit less parts uh, moving between the countries all right thank you harry so the last question that was forwarded to us prior to the webinar reads Estonia Finland passenger volumes were up quite nicely in October 4.4 percent was this mainly because the year earlier period was very weak um, yeah I'd say partly so uh, last year uh, October or last year uh, kind of Q4 as such uh, uh, was weaker than we expected in fact uh, but also we have worked a lot with an offer and and head-to-head uh, -head competition with with competitor offers and uh, of course uh, on on uh, Estonia Finland route we have um, we have very competitive offer we have uh, very new megastar uh, environmental friendly and, and large and nice new vessel operating uh, along with uh, older star the shuttle service also we saw very nice numbers on the uh, Finnish night cruise service which is offered uh, by the very nice cruise ferry uh, Silja Europa and also uh, if we compare with the last year uh, as, as a response to our competitor uh, addition a, a one ship to Muga Vosari route, we also uh, developed a uh, kind of uh, competitive uh, passenger and passenger car service to the cargo vessel Sea Wind with attractive, attractive prices from Muga to Vosari. So all in all combination, uh, this combination, I think, brought a very nice number in October. All right, and um, we have now exhausted the questions that were forwarded to us uh, prior to the webinar, but so let's continue with the ones that we received so far. I'll bounce this one right back to Veiko. The question is, what is the impact of IFRS 16 on the net profit in nine months in 2019? Yes, as uh, explained also in the presentation, there is a uh, very limited, basically non-existing effect on the net profit. The, mostly the effect is on EBITDA and, and also uh, amortization depreciation and also interest cost. And these numbers are explained in the presentation. Okay. Um, Year-to-date decline in the passenger number on Estonia Sweden route has been 10%. At the same time, you're decreasing your marketing spend. In the past, past few calls, you've said that a negative development on the route is not a concern. So how should we think about this route longer term? Is it important for Darling? And if so, will there be any reaction from the company to stem the decline in the backs? Um, yes, uh, it's uh, year-to-date decline in Estonia Sweden route. So year-to-date numbers are to a quite large extent uh, impacted by the uh, very long talking uh, of the Baltic Queen in the Q1. So therefore, this is the main reason for the decline in the passenger number. 
otherwise, we think that the route is uh, performing uh, quite nicely. Of course, there is a negative effect on cargo we see, which brings down uh, the, the, the total result for the route. But yes, I think the, uh, the, uh, the maybe the, yeah, the main well, effect uh, comes actually route, from the Q1 on top. Uh, one of our uh, or core uh, core routes, and then uh, it's uh, very important for us. We are the only uh, operator on uh, this route, and we are striving for a better better result and more more passengers. Thank you. And now the interest in the Burger King expansion continues. The question is, what is the return on capital and investment anticipated for the Burger King franchise rollout? If you cannot answer, uh, could you confirm that this investment should increase your return on capital going forward? Uh, well, our business plan definitely is a positive uh, one for uh, Burger King, but it's really a little bit early uh, to discuss this and then hopefully during the next webinars we will give uh, uh, a little bit uh, more information but uh, Veiko Havabu would already like to add something right now. Yes, I would make actually the reference to our two existing uh, Burger King restaurants on the ships on, on uh, Megastar and Star. So uh, these restaurants are very good performing. Of course, the profile is is rather different compared to what will be on land. And on land, of course, there will be more direct costs related to the operations. But uh, here, here I would just emphasize our very positive and good and already long time experience in operating this kind of business. And, and therefore, we, we believe uh, this is most definitely uh, adding to the company's results. Okay, thanks. And the last uh, two questions I have in front of me, which have come in, uh, concern the fuel uh, hedging, and I'll, I'll, I'll just read them out both together. So, uh, any chance to get an indication of fuel hedging level going into the next year? And the second question is, do you have an opinion of prolonging the fixing of fuel prices into 2020? If not, do you have a strategy for keeping fuel costs low also for the next year? And finally, could you quantify in percentages the savings coming from the price fixing and efficiency improvements? Uh, uh, yes. Um... Uh, here we can say that, of course, we will work continuously on the fuel efficiency projects uh, on, on, on the ships. So uh, we have done quite a lot already. Uh, so with the first, uh, first uh, investments to the fuel efficiency systems, we saw 4 to 9% uh, uh, decrease of the total consumption uh, per vessel. Um, and that is, this program is uh, ongoing already for a couple of years. And, and of course, uh, there are still uh, many things uh, to do in that area. In addition, uh, uh, with regards to the hedging levels or hedging policy, um, of course, this information is not public uh, or, or, or made public uh, of our specific plans with regards to these activities. But in general, uh, if we look at the uh, fuel uh, prices and fuel pricing levels, uh, we do not have a specific long-term fuel hedging policy. Uh, uh, I would relate these decisions also to the uh, annual uh, planning process. So as when we finish our budgeting and doing plans for next year, then only then we see what kind of levels are accept acceptable and attractive for us. And therefore we uh, make uh, kind of further decisions on these areas. Thank you. And I would just add that actually we've uh, we've highlighted in the report as well that uh, 
the effective uh, fuel prices on the global market uh, were in Q3 down about 9% compared to last year. And then um, our hedging and, and, and fuel efficiency improvements uh, added on top of that. Um, another question has just come in. Do you expect price pressure on the type of fuel you're using starting next year due to IMO 2020? Um, um, yeah, that's really hard to uh, predict uh, what will be the change in the market. I can refer to the change of fuel type uh, early uh, 2015 when we had to start to use the lower sulfur content fuel and uh, there as the supply is uh, rather local uh, due to the nature of the business then uh, we basically did not see any supply interruptions or capacity restrictions on the refineries so i believe this is uh, expected change and then all the counterparties are working towards uh, towards the, the change and then uh, I truly believe that will not have impact to our business. Okay, thank you, Veiko. So right now we have exhausted also the list of questions uh, you forwarded to us during, during this webinar. I'm just giving five more seconds if somebody should be typing something. But appears that uh, that uh, nobody is uh, really typing. So thank you everyone for listening in to our Q3 webinar. Um, thank you all from the entire team of uh, Dialink. Uh, the webinar's recording uh, will be available on the NASDAQ uh, Baltics YouTube channel. So big thanks for Nasdaq for that. And also we will be um, distributing the presentation uh, via stock exchange system in, in short while. So thank you everyone and uh, let's meet again after three months. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.